This is episode 106 in our road to Unicum, and today I review the T-44. This is the tier 8 Russian medium tank that unlocks both the T-54 and the Object 430. Now, I repurchased this recently to grind out the 430. I have now played both the 430 and the 430U, so I will be reviewing those tanks in upcoming episodes. But I wanted to talk about the T-44 because it is the quintessential Russian medium tank, and you can learn a lot of good things from its playstyle. Like the tier 8 to 10 Russian tanks, it shares a very strong turret. This one has auto bounce turret cheeks from a frontal perspective, the mantlet is well protected, and the cupola is such a thin, slim target, it's very difficult to target. So basically, if you're playing hull down, frontally you're a very tough target to pen. Now, I take a blind shot here. Often there are snipers in those bushes. Especially, normally I would wait to shoot a tank that's coming onto this road, this five lane that's pushing up toward the abbey. Now, I do find that it's easier to get up to Abbey because of the way this road is structured. See, there are all these rocks in front of us, so I can push up directly behind them because they didn't have a tank that came and spot, spotted the five line or contested it. I, so I like the North Spawn better from that perspective. You do need to be careful here. There's a building and the bushes on the right, and you can see there's a little gap in between the bushes here. You can get spotted through there, and I actually do get lit here, so I need to tuck in behind the building and just wait a little bit of time. I want to back out of here. Obviously, you know, I don't want to get too cute with those tank destroyers, you know, the Scorpion G and the stair that fired on me. So I'm going to back straight out, leaving that building in between me and where those guys typically are. Now, like the Abbey here, just like Hill and Mines, can offer a lot of flexibility as long as you don't lose too much hit points getting up here. You know, that's like kind of my big reservation. On this particular case, I'm the top tier. And so, you know, I figured I'd, it was a risk. I'll try getting up here. And since no one pushed up the five lane, I was able to get up here without taking any damage. Uh, but just like, you know, hill on mines or this abbey central, uh, you know, hill location, it gives you a very wide range of fire. So you can see here, I'm able to get a shot into that guard. They're pushing into the ELC even, who was way too far forward and overexposing himself. But one of the nice things I'm able to do here, so I've got the top gun in this tank. It's the 100 millimeter LB1 which has a really fast rate of fire. I've got a reload here of about 6.3 seconds, and that's fast enough against a lot of players to keep them chain tracked. So that AMX was you know, looking for the kill, leaned out, uh, you know, overexposed the side of his tank. The French heavies tend to have tall profiles, very soft side armor. Right? And so the other thing you can do here, obviously, is you can fire from Abbey you know, onto the two line, you know, in this case, however, our tanks have pushed pretty far down the two line, which they should, right? And they're not going to really take any flanking fire because of the fact that I'm on hill and nobody else is up here with me. So a lot of times what will happen, you know, and this is the same dynamic I've talked about on other maps where people tend to think of them as quarters. So this, in this case, there are two north-south quarters, the one two lane and the eight nine lane. But what makes this map you know, more complex in terms of how it plays out is the fact that, you know, Hill has a field of fire on both flanks. Okay, now if you've been watching the minimap, you may have noticed something that I didn't notice at the time, which is the Scorpion G has actually come up to Hill to try to kill me. And, you know, obviously tunnel vision's a bad thing. He was one-shottable. And part of the problem why I wasn't too worried about other tanks coming up here, one, 1375 can spot if they're trying to push up in between the alleys on the four lane and then our tank destroyers were at the B5 location so if anyone did try to push uphill especially a tank like the Scorpion G which is like a huge bat like head and is made out of paper he's gonna get shot on the way up okay so our eight lane has failed badly I need to get over here to try to help bail this flank out and you know we it looks like we're winning the one, two lanes, right? And so, you know, what I need to do here is stop the bleeding, buy time for our team. What's really disruptive, you know, obviously the EBR is very difficult to target. And this position that I'm in here is fairly strong in terms of, you know, I've got the Abbey behind me as hardcover, and then I've got buildings, so I can choose when I'm going to expose my tank. And main thing here, you know, with these wheeled vehicles if there's a if there's another tank that I can shoot at aside from the wheeled vehicles that's exposed I'll take those shots because you know these can be very difficult to land like the other day in Fisherman's Bay you know 
I was playing the T44. I think I missed, there were two EBR Hotch kisses, and I missed like nine consecutive shots. Now granted, some of that was my fault because I wasn't leading them enough, but basically you want to kill the wheelies whenever you can, but if there's a better target, more stationary target available, kill the other guys first. And that's a really simple common sense principle, but take shots that you can make and get rid of them. Okay, so looks like I've got a tank. Uh, I've got tanks on multiple sides of me. I have the guards on one side of me here to my right, to the east. The scorpion has also pushed up and I've got to get out of here. I'm right now caught in multiple fields of fire. The scorpion ten tries to rush me. I get a shot into him and then I get shot. I take engine damage and so in a situation like this you've got to repair that immediately. The engine damage will of course immobilize you until your engine's repaired and even after it's repaired the acceleration is so bad you know, it makes you a much easier target to hit. And, you know, Part of the speed here helps me to avoid taking any more damage. So I've helped to buy some time. You know, obviously we still have a pretty tenuous situation. If their tanks take me out and then push the two, three lanes, they can take out both of our arties. And I am hurrying these shots a little bit partly because I'm worried about their arties potentially firing me. But this one, you know, I sit down, take my time. You can see already there did try to fire on me. Okay, so we've got a one tank lead, but it, it, this can be deceptive and it really depends upon what their guard and EBR 75 are doing. Now I came down off of this hill originally because you can work a larger field of fire more flexibly when you're down on the ground below the buildings. Uh, sometimes what you'll find is when you're sitting up here, if you're trying to shoot at targets that are down on the sea lane, the buildings will actually get in your way. The good thing is our guys have pushed down, they've spotted their one of their arties. And now I've just got to be patient. So it looks like our two arties have kind of stalled the EBR. You know, that's not a fight that I would expect them to win, especially since the EBR can load that really good HE round that does like 270 alpha, which is two shots of 275, 40 potential damage, which is just nuts. Uh, really, that the gun on that tank is just too good. It's a really fun tank to play, but not very balanced. Okay, part of the other thing, so our guys are going to try to cap here. It looks like their Super Hellcat is on a sniping perch. Okay, he gets taken out here. I was debating what to do, and part of it also depended whether or not their tanks decided to try to cap us out, in which case I would go back. Our guys are trying to cap. There's really two issues with this. One, Artie is still alive, depending where he is. He could potentially reset the cap, and then two, those guys are sitting on caps. You see, they're getting, it looks like they're getting, no, actually one of them just backed off. The T29 just backed off of the cap. But if they're not careful, they can get reset because the EBR-75 can vision them from the shelf, which is at H3. I believe he can. It's close enough, depending on how his view is set up, his view range. Now, in this particular case, because we're in danger of getting capped out, I have to assume that our guys who are trying to cap won't, in fact, finish it, right? And so... We don't know where the other tanks are. I have to see who's on the cap, and it turns out it's the guard. All right, so the, because this tank's such a low priority, I take one quick snapshot and immediately move forward. By moving forward, I get underneath him, and the only thing that he would be able to shoot of my tank would be the turret, which, you know, as I've talked about, is a really tough target. Now, our 1375 has done a really good thing. He's pushed up the eight lane, so he cleared out their arty, who had alertly rotated around the map counterclockwise. This guard's firing the premium round, the APCR, so i got to be careful. He can penetrate me anywhere along my hull, even if I'm angled. And in this particular case, you know, I, the main thing is I just need to stay alive. We're close to two capping. You know, what's going to end up happening is I think our EBR-75 is going to reset us a number of times. But what I'm waiting for here, because I don't know where the VK-7501 is, I have to assume that the EBR-75 is the one who's been resetting our guys trying to cap and then that's what I was waiting for. 1375 is now pushed around. He's, he's pushing fire in from the east and so the guard is temporarily he like turns his turret, he's distracted and that gives me a kill shot. So the main thing, you know, the reason why we won this battle, a big reason why is I just stalled them out. You know, we lost the river lane, the eight lane push and I helped to delay them, you know, prevent the cap while our guys, you know, won the west side of the map. Okay, so, you know, this is a tier 8 battle facing tier 8s and 7s. You know, people often have asked, and you guys have seen, I've included a lot of episodes 
in this series looking at matches where you are the bottom tier. So this is tier 10 Muravanka and I, I talked about in other episodes I really like going to the E7 pivot point. So there's a little ridge there with some bushes you can spot. Now notice I knocked down these bushes here, a little gardening. This makes a really good sniper's perch and it turns out the T28 prod is coming here which is good meaning he can support me. Now this is one of those things if you're the bottom tier this tank has a really good camo and a strong turret uh, it doesn't have very good view range for a medium tank, but with optics you can get that up to you know the 445 that you need. And then I can dip down beneath the ridge. I was actually surprised I wasn't spotted. Although the Russian and the French heavy tanks don't tend to have good vision. They have poor vision. The In general, the German, the American, and the British heavies tend to have better view range, whereas the Russian and French, Italian, and Polish, not the Italian, the, the Polish tanks tend to have pretty poor view range. Now what will often happen is you'll see tanks down on the 7 or 8 lane and it's a great way for you to spot for your team and get flanking fire and if you weren't sure, if you're not sure where to go, if you've got a competent light or medium who's spotting the E7 ridge like I am, that place where the T828 prot was where I gardened and knocked down a few trees, that's a pretty good opening spot to shoot from because if you sit back in the bushes far enough you're not going to get lit even when you fire. I have come to the E7 ridge here and died where you know I'll come here and then a tier 9 or 10 tank will also come here and if I don't have someone backing me up you know some sniper cover over by D7 then you know you'll just get bullied. Basically you don't want to peek in areas where you're the bottom tier and if you face another tank they can just keep pushing over the ridge because there's no threat to them. right? And as it turns out like I can continue peeking over this ridge because no one spotted me. No one's playing their positions well and because they're, this is like one of the things, a lot of players who are less experienced, less skilled at this game tend to sit too far back, be too passive, not dictate situations. And even as a tier 8 medium, I'm able to dictate the vision game. And I spotted that WZ, and you might be wondering, why did I continue firing on that WZ as opposed to the other targets? Well, part of it has to do with the angles, like the other tanks that were down along the 9 lane weren't very exposed in terms of you know they were down in the gutter but the other thing is I know we're gonna win nine and zero lanes big right I mean if you look at the number of tanks that we have their FE has a super long reload and is a very big paper tank so what I'm gonna do is flex over and keep working damage on their Progetto 65 or Leopard charging him is just absolutely moronic you know not only is he at low hit points he's facing a auto reloader but you know I've been able to hit that Progetto three times now and so he's potentially one shottable by me or pretty much by anyone else the main thing is you cannot push the inside of the west ridge so you can't push along the four lane if your team doesn't have control of mid because otherwise you're just going to eat flanking fire and there's not much you can do about it late game pushing along the four lane is a very powerful thing to do but in this particular case that progetto he had been shot at multiple times and you know with the direction indicator if you turned it on you know I talked about this in my in episode 104 on the settings, he should know that there are tanks from the middle of the map firing on him, and therefore he should not push up the four lane. And so I was able to work you know, a lot of damage on him, soften him up, and the nice thing about this church, I have used this location so many times, firing on tanks along the EF lanes, especially people who are foolishly trying to cap, because there's so many bushes. You can work, you can do the double bush thing, you know, work the vision, and the great thing is now I'm sitting on the back hip of these heavy tanks, right? So they're focused, like this is just like we're talking about in Abbey. They're playing a north-south game and forgetting that they can get shot at east-west, which is exactly what's happening. And you can see I'm using the penetration, the aim indicator to tell me where to aim. I wasn't sure exactly, but, you know, wait until I find a spot where it was green and then fired. Now, granted, with the RNG, no guarantee that your shot's going to go where it landed. Right here, I make a mistake. I overtrust the armor and the extent to which I was exposed, and you know, trade off a you know 188 damage shell for his 566. But obviously, that's hilarious right there. He was like starting to come at me, you know, coming to bully me, and I just put a shot in his track, immobilized him. I'm gonna go find something else to do. And you know, tracking in this game is one of the most underrated, underrated skills, or you know. People don't take enough tracking shots. Now, I actually have a habit of overtaking tracking shots where I take them at angles where a tank can, like 90 degrees, 
and I might just miss. It's you definitely want to in many situations make sure to get the damage. So you know, in most cases, get the damage, and if they're angled like 20, 30, 40 percent, and you can get both the tracking shot and the damage, then definitely do that. And then there's some rare occasions like I just showed there with the 277 where my priority is not damage, but rather to immobilize him so he doesn't come kill me. And you know, as so I shot that, put that shot into his track, and then just ran around. So the 430 and the 430U, they play you know fairly differently from the T54 line. Um, you know I'll talk about that. It's partly because they have their armor layout is different. Um, they're both really good tanks. I've had some very interesting matches I want to show with you guys. But uh, you know coming back to T44, I'm actually glad that I did it. I really didn't know how it would hold up in the current meta, and the answer is I think it's a it's a fantastic tank. Even with the lackluster 190 silver ammo penetration, it's so good at doing different things and has just enough mobility to be effective. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.